119. Disposable man or Dominion man? Calcine Report number 125, January 1976. The struggle to command history is an intense one in our day, with a variety of groups contending for mastery, some essentially political in organisation and others religious. This struggle for power in history is the attempt by men to impose their ideas and plans onto history and to redirect the world in terms of their purposes. There are two aspects to history that men can neglect only at the risk of becoming a failure in history. These are permanence and change. By permanence, we mean those standards and values which are eternal in nature and absolute, God-given and unchanging. Direction and meaning are given to history by the absolutes which govern it. God, as the Lord of history and the maker of all things, alone can give an unchanging and absolute law to it. Change has reference to developments and program within history. Change is possible because permanence is basic to it. That is, there are standards and absolutes which require that men and nations repent, grow, develop and mature. To deny either permanence or change is to become eventually irrelevant to history. Old China once was ahead of the West, but its acceptance of total relativism meant a denial that absolutes exist. Taoism and Confucianism, and later Buddhism, denied absolutes and all permanence. In so doing, they made change meaningless, because there was then no standard which required change. As a result, Chinese civilization stagnated, except where conquerors briefly imposed their will on it. Relativism destroyed the meaning of both permanence and change. In the Western world, the Church has too often been infected by Neoplatonism and has not seen the necessity of change and has stressed essentially permanence. The result of such faith has been to make the Church irrelevant. The same has been true too often of political conservatives. They have stressed permanence and resisted change. Moreover, their idea of permanence has been commonly defective, humanistic rather than godly. By permanence, they have been prone to mean simply the world up to yesterday, not the Lord and his word. Liberals and radicals, political and religious, have stressed change, and this has given them a great advantage in capturing the mind and imagination of youth. The idealism of youth and its dissatisfaction with accepted evils leads it to an uncritical demand for change, and the result is a boon to the profits of change. Since change is inevitable, the champions of change come to believe in the inevitability of their doctrine of change, an entirely different matter. Moreover, change is mistakenly identified with progress, whereas some changes are an obstacle to progress. Furthermore, faith in change breaks down when a society loses its trust in absolutes. Nothing then has meaning, and change and permanence are alike meaningless and empty concepts. Biblical faith alone does justice to both permanence and change. It declares the triune God to be the sole and absolute source of all true law, interpretation and meaning. It is he who creates, predestines and governs all creation and history. Change is required by his word. First, man must subdue the earth and exercise dominion over it under God and in terms of his word. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. This requires change, development and growth. Second, his word requires change within ourselves, since we are fallen creatures and cannot put our creation mandate properly into force apart from his regenerating power. Change is thus required of both man and his world in terms of God's law and calling. Only biblical faith does justice to history's requirements for permanence and change. The duty of the Christian is thus to know and understand the word of permanence, God's word, and to apply its requirements of change to himself and the world, and to every area and aspect thereof. This means godly reconstruction. 
non-Christian thoughts cannot do justice to history. It can only prevail for a time where the Church defaults and defects from biblical faith. In our time in particular, political and religious groups are increasingly incompetent in their grasp of history, in their defective views of permanence and change. Having forsaken God, they have forsaken the command of history, and the result is our growing collapse and the rudderless drift of the nations from one crisis into another. Men do not command history now, but are more and more commanded by it. The mood of men becomes one of irrelevance and impotence. Instead of God's dominion man, we have instead our modern disposable man, whose function is trifling and whose life is readily disposable. God did not make man to be disposable. The idea of disposable man is a human creation and a deadly one. God created man in his own image to be the Lord of creation under God, to exercise dominion. Man was given a state and calling and made the crown of creation. God made man the necessary point in history, the bearer of God's plan, and he made the incarnation a means of recalling and regenerating man in terms of his purpose and plan. The future then cannot be in doubt. Dominion man will prevail over disposable man. The issue then is us. Which man are we? Disposable man or dominion man?